Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is the second in a series of videos that will look into the potential of light electric vehicles and how that potential can be realized. This video will look at light electric vehicles and how they're classified or not classified in many cases and look at ideas for how this could be done better because in my opinion the current classification system is just not fit for purpose. Light electric vehicles get shoved into incredibly restrictive e-bike classes regardless of the purpose of vehicle and what it's intended for. I think that it's stifling innovation and that it's creating needless conflicts between different user groups, between pedestrians and between motor vehicles. So I'm going to propose that light electric vehicles need their own classification system, one that enables their use and reduces conflict. These are my ideas and I don't think for a second that I have the answer to everything. If you disagree with me, then that's fine. Let me know in the comments what you think might work better. Um, I feel that the status quo is just not sustainable. So the idea here is to promote ideas for a fairer system for everybody. Most light electric vehicles that are commercially sold are forced to meet some pretty restrictive laws and requirements regarding power and speed. At most, they can have 750 watts of power and a maximum assisted speed of around 30 kilometers an hour. That might be fine for a recreational e-bike that has the ability to go on shared use pathways. But overall, it's an incredibly narrow-minded and restrictive way of doing things. If you then apply the same rules to taxi type vehicles or cargo transporting vehicles. So right now there is, there is nothing within the law that allows for the variations that you get with the wide range of light electric vehicles that are available. Everything with a small electric motor is essentially shoved into the same band or the same class. So if we look at this awesome cargo bike, laden down with like a driver and cargo, it really needs more than 750 watts to get where it's going. Like if you consider that it goes up to nine hills, um, it could really benefit from a more powerful motor. It could also benefit from being able to move with traffic rather than getting shoved to the side of the road. But there's nothing that allows for this to be the case. The current classification system lumps it in with pedal assisted bicycles. And most of these vehicles have to be designed with pedals to be even allowed on the streets, which is kind of ludicrous. If the classification system was done differently, we could really shift huge amounts of cargo in cities with vehicles like these. The regulations are also causing needless conflicts because they're not fit for the purpose. People that really should be on the roads are afraid to be on the roads, so they go on pavements instead, and that puts pedestrians at needless risk. If they go on the roads, then there are conflicts with drivers because the vehicles are unable to move effectively with traffic. These conflicts that occur on the streets and play out in online discussion are caused very much, I think, because of regulations that are not fit for purpose. I don't want to spend too much time complaining about why the current system is wrong. The idea of this video is to be proactive and look at solutions to the problem. So let's look at some different classes that I would like to see considered for light electric vehicles. So the first category that I'd like to see is the recreational LEV. And I thought that this level of vehicle could be really based pretty much around the current regulations for e-bikes with a few tweaks. So for example, the power for most things could be limited to 750 watts. Um, maybe keep the speed thing on there, although I'm not a big fan on the speed restrictions. Um, but 750 watts for like your e-bike. But then bump that up for like 1500 watts for cargo style bikes or multi-person vehicles or vehicles that would be regularly towing a trailer, right? Because 750 watts it's not really scaled with the different vehicles. So I'd like to see there be some flexibility that, that takes that into account rather than lumping everything in as a catch-all. So the next class I'd like to see is an urban class LEV, and that will be capable of 30 miles an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, plus 10% or something around that level. And it will cover light electric vehicles used for urban transport and there would be more stringent safety requirements for both things like construction, braking, battery systems, safety requirements for the operation of the vehicles. And I don't think there's anything here that couldn't be worked in alongside the current operation of other vehicles. Um, so road cars have to have checks, vans have to have checks, and perhaps 
maybe the maximum power for this class could be three to four kilowatts. And I think this would allow for vehicles that go on urban streets uh, with speed limits of 50 kilometers an hour and that it would allow them to run with the traffic flow on those streets. I don't think these vehicles would be really permitted to be going on multi-use pathways where you've got pedestrians, but if they can run at 50 kilometers an hour, then why would they need to? Because they could then safely keep up with the traffic flow and be authorized and legal to do so. Another class that I'd like to see would be a cargo class, light electric vehicle. And again, these would be capable of sort of 30 miles an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, plus 10%. And these would allow for goods to be delivered in urban areas in our cities. And there'd probably need to be additional safety requirements for these because, I mean, they generally are. Um, there already are additional requirements for goods vehicles with cars and trucks. So it makes sense that there would be similar considerations for light electric vehicles. I mean, I'm not advocating for some Wild West scenario here. Um, the idea is that we move this cargo and we move it safely and effectively. Another class would be like a taxi class LEV for moving around people. And there are already regulations that allow for taxis with cars. So why can't we have a class of LEV where there are regulations that will allow for people to be safely transported, whether it's through buggies or you know, on the back of trailers or however you want to do it, there could be a taxi class. Some people might need to go a bit quicker. So for example, like the smaller highways. So maybe there could be like a highway class, light electric vehicle, and that might be capable of going at 50 miles an hour or 80 kilometers an hour. And perhaps this type of vehicle would be useful for commuters that have to travel in from the suburbs on slightly larger roads. And again, because it's a more powerful class, it would need to have different kinds of safety checks to go along with it. Basically, to ensure that these kinds of vehicles are safe to operate at higher speeds. Larger interstate highways and motorways could be off limits to current light electric vehicles. What I'm keen for is to enable light electric vehicles in the cities and suburbs so that we can leverage all of the advantages that come with using them over short duration journeys. Having a framework really unlocks a huge amount of innovation and development. If we're not restricted by the current regulations, then who knows what kind of vehicles that we can develop and that could be moving us around. I think they're going to be using far fewer resources and causing much less impact. These are just my thoughts, so it'd be really great to hear from people about what you think. There's a section on our Discord community for this topic, as well as on the High Voltage website. And there's going to be many more videos in this series, as there are lots of areas in which light electric vehicles are being limited and held back. As always, a huge thank you to the people that have joined the High Voltage channel. Your contributions make a massive difference to how things are run. And thanks also to everyone else for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.